past 20 years, there have been a number of individuals who have been instrumental in selecting the best participants for the JET program. So, at the outset, uh, I would like to introduce the selection committee members who are here with us tonight. Uh, Dr. Agnes Niekawa. Yeah. Mr. Siegfried Rambler, <laughs> Ms. Kathy uh, Musheni, uh, where are you? She's not here. Um, Dr. Robert Huey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And Dr. Petris Flowers. Hi. And in addition, I would like to acknowledge Dr. William Zanera, who has been actively involved in promoting the JET program at the Hawaii Pacific University. I wish to express my deepest appreciation to all of you for your many years of dedicated service and contribution to the success of this exchange program. Thank you very much. The Japanese government established the JET program in 1987 to advance foreign language education in schools and to promote international exchange in the local communities between Japanese youth and foreign youth. In the 20 years, the JET program has become the world's largest international exchange program with over 46,000 participants from 44 countries. And I'm very proud to say that Hawaii has sent approximately 800 JETs altogether to almost every prefecture in Japan since the inception of the program. In 2001, the number of Japanese college students going abroad to study reached 78,000 with 80% of them studying in Europe and in North America. As JETS, you have played a key role in mentoring hundreds of students thereby opening new doors for the young people of Japan and instilling in them a greater global mindset that is open to new experiences. Many of you have made lifelong friendships and everlasting memories during your time in Japan. I'd like you to treasure those precious moments and I ask all of you to continue your involvement with Japan and to take on a greater and active role in fostering the partnership and friendship of Japan and the United States. I would like to express my deepest appreciation to JET Alumni Association President Mr. Mark Soeda and his fellow officers for taking on the challenge of contacting all of you and for organizing this event. I would also like to convey my heartfelt appreciation to all the present and past presidents, officers, and former JETs who have been involved in promoting and administering JET and JET Alumni Association. And finally, I would like to recognize one more person who has dedicated herself day in and day out to the JET program for so many years. I don't want to say how many. Uh, <laughs> Miss Lisa Sakamoto. <laughs> As a JET program coordinator, Miss Sakamoto has been key to the promotion and success of the JET program in Hawaii. Please enjoy the rest of the program. 
reminisce and make new friends. Thank you very much. Good evening, fellow Chet alumni and distinguished guests. Tonight is, much, is as much about all of you as it is about the program itself. Um, what you see before you, like uh, Kuniko mentioned earlier, you have probably the largest collection of Hawaii JET alumni ever assembled since 87 when this program was launched. JET participants have been living examples of cultural bridges that connect America and the Western world with Japan. Now, while our teaching days are long behind us, or for some of us longer, um, I think it's the experiences and the memories that um, we, you know, we accumulated and we keep from our experience that we pass on and we share with those around us here. So, you know, the JET experience, while we're no longer there, it still goes on because you are still that bridge and you still, you know, act as ambassadors to, you know, America and Japan. Um, at this time, the JET Alumni Association would like to thank some very special people who made tonight possible. Um, let's give another round of applause for um, Consul General Iwatani and his lovely wife for their ongoing support always for the JET program. And especially for allowing us to host this event in your lovely home. Thank you. Also, uh, the next person I'd like to recognize, um, this person has only been in Hawaii here with us for about five months now. But in this short amount of time, I think that uh, she has established herself as one of our greatest supporters. You know, she's been very receptive to a lot of ideas and she's had a lot of wonderful ideas of her own and um, we look forward to continue working with her. Vice Consul Kuniko Nakamura. And finally, um, I'm going to embarrass her one more time here, because I know she's hiding in the back. But um, this person we all know, she's um, been there for all of us when we were first accepted into the program, answering all of our questions, helping us prepare for departure, giving us all the information we need, and taking care of us. Lisa Sakamoto, please come to the front. <laughs> Anyway, um, I think tonight, um, please take the opportunity to, uh, to speak, to greet these wonderful people and um, show them your appreciation. And um, again, like uh, Consul General Iwatani said, you know, tonight is a night to reunite with old friends and to make many new ones. And the Jet Alumni Association looks forward to meeting with all of you at our future events, and you're all welcome to it. So please enjoy tonight. Thank you very much for coming. Aloha. And now I would like to recognize the past JETA president. Um, would you step forward and, uh, and uh, be seen? Mr. Mark Ewald. Excuse me if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Where is Mark? There. <laughs> Ms. Charlene, is it Mutsuno or Matsuno? Mutsuno. Matsuno. Ms. Charlene Matsuno. Mr. Bob Furukawa. Mr. Bob Furukawa. Now I'm embarrassed. Ms. Michelle Otake. Well, we're only doing this to embarrass everybody. Ms. Nadine Nishioka. And Mr. Brad Araki. Well, thank you very much for the, to the past Jetta presidents. And there were a lot of other people who were on the executive committee um, who have been very dedicated and committed in fostering the Jet program. The internationally renowned ukulele artist. Mr. Jake Shimabukuro.
Aloha, thank you very much. There's nothing I can really share with any of you that you don't already know. I mean, I, um, unfortunately, I haven't uh, been a part, I, I haven't participated in, in the UHF program yet. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe someday. But one of the things that I, that I do know is it's a wonderful opportunity for anyone to travel. You know, Hawaii is a very special and unique place, and it's, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't dream of, of being born and raised in any other place other than, other than Hawaii. But it wasn't until I started leaving the island and started traveling and touring and experiencing other cultures, experiencing different environments that I realized how truly lucky I was to be here. There's a lot of simple things that I would take for granted and being away from home. I, in the last several years now, I, I, my touring schedule is about nine months out of the year. You know, when you're traveling and you're in a different environment, it's a little scary sometimes, especially when there's a language barrier and you don't know much about the culture. Uh, being in Hawaii, it's a little bit easier to make that bridge, you know, because we have, we appreciate so much of, the, of our Asian heritage here. But, you know, but when you're traveling and, and you're a little disoriented and you're a little scared, you get a little homesick, sometimes those are the greatest moments and the, and the greatest opportunities for you to just, to not, to not break down and, and you know, it all wimpy and stuff, but it's those times that you really have to be strong and you have to say, hey, you know, I'm out of my comfort zone. This is the perfect time for me to learn something new, put myself in a different environment, and you know what? I'm going to just, I'm going to get through this. You know, I'm going to take advantage of every opportunity and I'm going to make the most of it. I'm going to make the best of it. And when I come back home, when I return home to wherever, you know, Hawaii or wherever you come from, you're gonna be that much more, you're gonna be that much better person. You're gonna have that much more knowledge, more experience. You'll have more to share with the people around you, your other peers, your family members. And that's what it's all about. You come back home and you have to share these experiences. You have to let people know what's going on up there. You have to let them know what you learned. You know, because that's, that's when the circle becomes complete. You know, the cycle. You complete the cycle, you go up there, you gain all this knowledge, all this experience, you come back and you share it with the people here in your home.